Hey, Shalom, Most High Christ Blessed. I'm Captain Yadin. And to my left, Officer Ben and I. And this is 15 minutes with the captains. And the topic we're going over today is dealing with law enforcement. That's right, dealing with law enforcement. Unless you've uh, been asleep or you don't watch TV or you live in a cave, you know all the issues that's going on right now with our people, with the police, dealing with the law enforcement, getting pulled over, uh, hands up, don't shoot, uh, getting beat police brutality, all these different things, right? And we're just gonna go over some scriptures to kind of show what the Bible says about dealing with uh, law enforcement, dealing with law enforcement of the land, right? So what we're gonna do, make sure you tune into this, take notes, listen to this, right? Because this is important, especially if you have kids, you married, or whatever, you know. But this is, a, this is an important class right here. With everything that's going on today, make sure you take notes of this class. Make sure you listen, you pay attention, and, you know, pass this word on. Because every single day, something goes on in America with our brothers and sisters dealing with law enforcement. So we need to try and take a biblical route to get ourselves out of that situation. All right? So let's start out with Haggai 1 and 5. One of my favorite scriptures. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Read that. This is the book of Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Now, therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So the scripture says, consider your ways. A lot of times we're just sleepwalking here in America. We don't consider the things we do, the decisions we make, the choices. Oh, Read it again. The book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 5. Go ahead. Now, therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So the scripture says for us to consider our ways. We got to consider the things we do. Right? Our walk in this world, how we deal with people, our brothers and sisters, as well as how we deal with the other nations. So we can't just be sleepwalking out here. We got to consider everything we do, every choice, I make, a choice we make, it comes with repercussions and consequences. So read it one more time. The book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 5. Go ahead. Now, therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So we got to make sure we consider our ways when we're dealing with law enforcement, right? Now give me Judith chapter 8 verse 24. Judith 8 verse 24. Because a lot of times we got to realize that um, we're not out here by ourselves. You know, it's people that depend on us. Read that scripture. The book of Judith chapter 8 and verse 24. Go ahead. Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren. Go ahead. Because their hearts depend upon us. So our brethren depend upon us. Our brothers, our sisters, our wives, our sons, our daughters, they depend on us. They depend on you, right? So when you're dealing with law enforcement, guess what? You gotta, you need to focus on making it home to your brother. They depend on us, read. The book of Judah chapter eight, verse 24. Go ahead. Now therefore, oh brother, let us show an example to our brethren because their hearts depend on, on us. Go ahead. And the sanctuary. And the sanctuary. The sanctuary depends upon us, right? So we got to make sure we consider in our ways and how we deal with the other nations because the church depends on us, right? Read. And the house. Go ahead. And the altar rests upon us. So all those things rest upon us. So when we're out in the world dealing with the enemy, we got to make sure we're circumspect in all things. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and we're going to start at verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. To everything there is a season. So it's a season for everything, mm -hmm. right? Great. And a time to to every purpose under the heavens. So it's a time for everything under the heavens. Go drop down to verse 7. Verse 7. 7. Read 7 and 8. All right, verse 7. Go ahead. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to keep what? A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A lot of times we get pulled over. We think it's the time to run our mouth and why this happened, what happened, why this, tell me this, what's your badge number, uh, get your uh, sergeant on the, on the line. No, it says it's a time to, read it again, it's a time to do what? Verse 7. Go ahead. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. So it's a time to keep silent mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a time to speak. Read. Verse 8. A time to love 
in a time to hate, a time of war, in a time of peace. So sometimes it's a time for us to be in straight war mode, right? right. But not when you're dealing with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Not when you have no power dealing with your enemy. That's not the time for war. It's a time to keep silent and it's a time for peace, right? So let's start off. Let's go to um let's go to Romans chapter 13 verse 1, right? Romans 13 and verse 1, we're going to read to verse 3, right? So what does the the Bible, what does the Most High say about dealing with uh, the powers of this world, mm -hmm. dealing with the law enforcement of this world, with the police, the sheriffs, you know, the county, uh, the state troopers, all those different things. Let's see what the Most High say about that. Read that, start at verse one. The book of Romans chapter 13 and verse one. Go ahead. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. So the scripture said, let everybody be subject to the higher powers, right? Here in America, guess what? Our government is the higher power in America. Right. Esau is the higher power right now. So we have to be subject into the higher powers, read. For there is no power but of God. So it's no power, but it's only God. God's the only power that we have. Mm -hmm. So guess what? If anybody here in this land has any power, it was given of them by who? By the Most High God, right? Read. The powers that be are ordained of God. Go ahead. Verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the powers, resisteth the ordinance of God. So if we resist the power that's set up to, um, to help us keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Because mm -hmm. when we think about it, the laws that are mostly upheld by the land are laws that come out of the scriptures. Right. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, right? All those different things. So when we resist those powers, we resist God. Keep reading. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works. So it says rulers are not a terror to good works, right? So what's that going into? It's talking about if you're keeping the commandments of God, if you're following God's law, statutes, and, and commandments, you don't really have to worry about law enforcement. You know, I, I remember I heard a story of a brother that had a problem with, with breaking the habit of smoking weed. Okay. You know, he got pulled over and he was like, man, you know, this is one of the first times he got pulled over when he wasn't worried about the cop going to his trunk and raising right. his trunk up and finding where he would keep his weed at. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So guess what? He sat there. He was calm, cool, collective, you know, which really helped him out of getting a ticket at all. Right. right? But right. If, if not, if he would have had that stuff going on, he would have been nervous. He would have been uh, talking to the cop and uh, man, what I do, I ain't do nothing, mm -hmm. right? Because he worried about them finding that weed that's in a car, you know? Read it one more time. This is verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works. So it's not a terror to good works. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a lot of brothers that's, um, that's in the camp when we used to go places. I would always say, why are we going down all these back roads? You know, he was like, oh, man, you know, this is just the, 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 the way I'm used to going. I said, bro, you don't sell drugs no more. You don't have to be afraid of riding on the main roads to going to all these back roads. Right? <laughs> right. So if you're doing good works, you don't have to worry about if you get pulled over, what's going to happen to you. Go ahead. But to the evil. But to the evil. Mm -hmm. If you're not keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments, guess what? You should be afraid of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. You should be afraid of getting pulled over. I watch all these videos that get put out on, on uh, talking about police brutality, brutality, how the police are doing them wrong, but they finding weed on them, mm -hmm. they finding guns on them, right? They finding out they just broke in the house and they got all kinds of stolen goods in their in their car, but they're like, well, they shouldn't have pulled them over for no reason, or they racially profiled them. It's like, well, what about the drugs they just got from out of the community, mm -hmm. right? That's it on that. No, nah, that ain't great. Verse three: For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Read. Do that which is good, and thou should have praise of the same. So if we do what's good, we gonna have praise of the same, mm -hmm. right? We do what's good, we are not gonna have to worry about law enforcement. Now, I used to work with a, a police officer, and it was a um, on his Facebook page. It's a, it's a scripture. It's this scripture right here that we're about to read. Mm -hmm. It's a scripture on his Facebook page showing that they understand that they are the powers ordained of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Keep reading. Read verse 4. This is verse 4. 
for he is the minister of God to thee for good. These police officers believe that they are ministers of God for good. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have this picture on their pages. They have that uh, the black within uh, blue line okay. and they have that scripture written on it, mm -hmm. right? So they believe this thing. They understand it. It like brings it right to life, right? Read that again. Verse four, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. Go ahead. But if thou do that which is evil. But if you break God's law, statutes, and commandments, read. Be afraid. Be what? Be afraid. Say, you should be afraid if you break God's law, statutes, and commandments. Why? For he bear not the sword in vain. He said, because he don't have that gun on his side for no reason. Mm -hmm. Right? He carried that gun for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that's to execute judgment for those breaking God's law, statutes, and commandments. Is that on first? Is it on that? No, that's mm -hmm. Keep reading. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So the police officers believe that that's who they are, right? right? And guess what? The scripture is talking about that. It's telling you, do good, right. do good. If you do evil, they got people set in place to put you in check to exercise God's vengeance. Right? Right. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 66, right? Let's go through some of the steps and stages of being pulled over by the police. You know, the kind of things that we go through. You know, I know, I I mean, you know, to be honest, I mean, I never really did anything that was hardcore against the law. But with us being Israelites, we all go through these same emotions when being pulled over by the police, right? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. Start at verse 66. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 66. Go ahead. And thy life shall hang in doubt so before when, thee. So when you get those blue lights behind you, guess what? Your life is going to be hanging in doubt before you. You're going to know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's something about them blue flashing lights when they get behind you. you like, oh, what I do? What I do? Right, right. What I do? You had yourself thinking about stashing something. And you ain't <laughs> never had nothing to stash ever in your life. Because right. you like, what's going to happen? I'm going to have to deal with a Sandra Bland episode, a Mike Brown episode. What's going to happen to me? Hands up, don't shoot. We don't know what kind of cop I'm going to get. Is he having a bad day? having a good day? Do you hate Israelites? Whatever it is. Read it again. Verse 66. Go ahead. And thy light shall hang in doubt before thee. Go ahead. And thou shalt fear day and night and shall have no assurance of thy life. So when we get pulled over by law enforcement, we really don't have assurance of our life. We don't right. know what's going to happen. Right. right? Keep reading. Verse 67. In the morning thou shalt say, would God it were Eve? In the morning we're going to be like, man, I wish it was night. Mm -hmm. Right? And at Eve thou shalt say, would God it were morning? Same thing. Mm -hmm. Even at night we're going to be like, man, I wish it was morning. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's the things that's going to be going through your head when you're getting pulled over by the police. Is it day? Is it morning? Is it this? Is it that? Let's just get past this thing. Let's let the next day happen. Mm -hmm. So you're ready for it to get over with, right? right? So let's go to Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 5. So look, pay attention, Israel. Pay attention. Because, you know, the words that I'm giving you right now, the, the scriptures that I'm giving you right now, this is the same thing I told my son. I told him the same thing before I was in the truth on how to deal with law enforcement, right? So let's read that. Matthew chapter 5, verse, verse 25. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 25. Go ahead. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Nah, argue with the police officer. Agree with thine adversary quickly. So you just got pulled over. You pulled over to the side of the road. You roll your window down. You got your license insurance already out because that would be you agreeing with your adversary quickly right not wanting to figure out why did i get pulled over why did you stop me? look agree with him you know hey how you doing officer you know how you doing here here's my um license here's this here's that or whatnot guess what he may be like ah oh, this is a good guy right here i don't have to deal with no no talk all they thinking about is listening and having to deal with brothers and sisters First thing they do, they pull their cameras up, and they got the camera in the cop play face talking about something. Uh, where's the supervisor? What did I do? This and that. That's not what the scripture says. Read that again. Matthew 5, verse 25. Go ahead. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Agree with him quickly. Read. 
while thou art in the way with him. While he got you pulled over and you stopped, you need to agree with him quickly while you're in the way with him, read. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. If you run your mouth too much, guess what? He can take you to, to jail. Right. Even for speeding, even for going over like what, 20 miles per hour, right. depending on what it is, the police can send you to jail for that. Right. right? It's all kinds of weird rules and laws that we don't know about that can get you arrested. But if you agree with him, guess what? He probably will let you go. Write you a ticket, write you a citation, whatever it is, give you a warning. Right. It can happen. It says, agree with our adversary quickly while you're at the way with him, read. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. Lest he bring you to the judge, take you downtown, 211 Poplar, read 201 Poplar. And the judge deliver thee to the officer. And guess what? He's going to say, hey, take him, take him down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Bailiff, get him, read. And thou be cast into prison. And then you go into the prison system. Right. The prison system. And guess what? You're trying to get out of jail. You're trying to get somebody to call in for you to get out, tell you off of work. Right. You know what I'm saying? You need bail money. All these different things can happen. You get, depending on what type of job you got. They find out you went to jail, you can get fired. All those different things, right? So guess what? If we just agree with our adversary quickly, we'll be okay, right? Mm -hmm. Give me that, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. Proverbs 15, verse 1. Now look, this is in the Bible. This ain't how I feel about it. You know, this is the Bible. This is what the Most High God say about dealing with law enforcement. Read that. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 1. Go ahead. A soft answer. What kind of answer? A soft answer. Why, why you need to know where I'm going? Why you, why you got to know where I'm going? What you mean? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. What? What kind of answer? A soft answer. Uh, yes, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm on my way home. I just got off from work. Mm -hmm. A soft answer does what? Turneth away wrath. Turn away wrath. Mm -hmm. Or wrath. I've gotten out of so many tickets just for being nice. Mm -hmm. Just for, yes, sir. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know I was going a little fast. I know I was speeding a little bit. Man, I've been at work all day. i just ready to get home. I'm not even going to lie to you. Yeah. All right, slow it down. Mm -hmm. Slow it down. Mm -hmm. A soft answer turneth away wrath. Is that it on that? No. Yeah. Read. But grievous words, but grievous words, talking trash back and forth to the police officer, thinking you got rights in America. Jake really think he got rights out here. But Great. grievous words do what? Stir up anger. Stir up anger. Nobody want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Nobody want to hear that. And you sisters, listen to me. If you're sitting in the passenger seat and your man just got pulled over, shut up. Right. Don't say nothing. All that's going to do is make the situation worse, right? Because right? he definitely don't want to hear your husband talking, but he definitely don't want to hear you talking, mm -hmm. right? A soft answer turn up away wrath. That's it? That's it. Go to Sirach chapter 9. Sirach chapter 9, and we're going to start at verse, let's see, we're going to start at verse 13. All right, this is the book of Sirach chapter 9 and verse 13. Go ahead. Keep thee far. From the man that has power to kill. It says to keep you what? Keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. So we already found out that the uh, police the police officers feel like they're God's sword for evil. He's got that. You know he's got a gun on him. He's got a taser. He's got a baton. He's probably got a secondary gun. Right. All those different things. He can choke you out and nothing can happen. Everybody can be seeing it. They can be recording it. Look, you should want to keep far away from that type of person. Read. Keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. Read. So shalt thou not doubt the fear of death. Go ahead. And if thou come unto him. If you come unto him, you get pulled over by this police officer. Read. Make no fault. Do what? Make no fault. Make no fault. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't, don't think you got a... Uh, God given First Amendment right when you can say whatever you want to say to this police officer. Some states, if you uh, use profanity, they can just take you to jail. Mm. Some look, a cop can take you to jail anytime he wants to. Right. You know, it, it don't have to be a reason. If he want to take you to jail, he can take you to jail. He'll just deal with the consequences after that. But what you gonna do? Nothing. You gonna call your lawyer? You know what I'm saying? How many of y'all got lawyers on retainer? Right? No, not many. I'm not gonna say not none of y'all, but not many. Of us have lawyers just sitting back waiting that we paying already to come and get us out of jail. Look, we gotta we gotta consider our ways. Keep reading. Make no fault. 
Lest he take away thy life presently. Lest he do what? Lest he take away thy life presently. Don't make any faults because he can put you to death. And they, they get off. We know about the scripture, Zechariah 11. They get off. They'll hold right. themselves not guilty. We right. see it every single day. Right. So if you know this what you're dealing with, you should be trying to uh, take no fault. Soft words, right? right. Read. Remember. That thou goest in the midst of snares. Christ said, uh, be thou uh, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Right. Remember, this is Babylon the Great. Mm -hmm. Right? All nations are confederate against us. Right. All nations want to keep us in captivity so we don't put them in captivity and rule the world. Right. And take this kingdom, kingdom like they know it was meant for us. Mm -hmm. Right? Read that again. Remember. That thou goes in the midst of snares. We're in the midst of snares. Everything is trying to catch us up. They try and say certain words to get you out of the spirit, get you out of your square, get you out of your zone. They do this thing, right? So that's why you watch the videos when the cop would be like, hey, what's what's wrong? What what you so upset about? Why why are you mad? I mean, I'm just asking a question, but but wait. They're doing that because they want you to jump out the spirit. They want to use that new baton he got. He want to use that new taser he just got issued. He want to do this thing. All the while he just cut off his um, body camera. All these different things. They want to do that. They want to get you out of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Remember that thou goes in the midst of snares, and thou that walkest upon the battlements of the city. We're in a war zone. We are at war. We, we are at war. The other nations know it. We got to wake up and understand that we are at war. We are at war, right? Go to um, Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8. Baruch 3 and verse 8. Because it's time for our people to consider our ways. Consider your ways in all things. Read. This is the book of Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8. Go ahead. Behold. We are yet this day in our captivity. We are in our captivity. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many videos you can watch of people pulled over telling the police, ah, ah, give me your give me your supervisor. I want your supervisor. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's gonna save you. Like it's gonna be like an Israelite gonna show up and be like, ah. Yahweh Bond shitting your whole shop rocket fire. You're gonna be like, oh. <laughs> nah, that's not happening. Right? This is, we're not the other nations where we can do all these things, curse out a police officer, tell him what the law is, and he's going to say, you know what? That is the law. You have a nice day. Nah, it's not happening like that. Right. We're yet this day in what? The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Go ahead. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are in captivity. We are servants here. We are slaves here. Read. Where thou had scattered us. The Most High God has put us in this captivity because guess what? We don't want to keep God's law, statutes, and commandments. Read. For a reproach. Go ahead. And a curse. Go ahead. And to be subject to payment. We subject to payments. Just mm -hmm. like you get those tickets. You got to pay that thing. It's a curse, the situations that we have to be in. So guess what? We can't do what everybody else do because we are in captivity. Give me Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. This is the book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 10. Go ahead. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. So guess what? Everything ain't going to be fair here in Babylon the Great. Mm -hmm. Everything's not going to be right. Everything's not going to be according to what the other nations say your God-given rights are. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be that way. Because it's not what? Read it again. This is the book of Micah, chapter 2 and verse 10. Go ahead. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. This is not our resting place. It's not going to be all peaches and cream for us here. It's going to constantly be, like the scripture said, we are in the midst of snares. Right. That's what it's going to be like for us. It's not going to be a resting place for us. Read. Because it is polluted. Go ahead. It shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. So guess what? This is not our resting place. Mm -hmm. So don't look for equality or fairness when you're dealing with law enforcement. You should be looking for what's really important. Give me uh, Ch Jeremiah chapter 29, and we're going to start at verse uh, 5. Verse 5. So look, we got to keep in mind what's really important here, right? Is it important for us to argue with a police officer because we don't feel like we were speeding? We don't feel like um, we feel like we had our blinker on long enough. 
you know, we feel like we made a full stop and he say we didn't. Is that what's important to win that argument? No, that's, that's not what's important to win the argument. Let's see what the Most High says is important. Read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 4. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, until all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon, build ye houses and dwell in them. So guess what? It's important for us to build houses and dwell in them. You can't do that when you are locked up in the uh, industrial prison complex. Right. Read. And plant gardens. Go ahead. And eat the fruit of them. Read. Verse 6. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters. Guess what? Our wives are important. Mm -hmm. Our husbands are important. Our sons are important. Our daughters are important. Read. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. Guess what? Because guess what? I know I would like to see my son uh, get married. Right. I'm sure you want to see your daughter get married. Right. You want to see your son get married. Mm -hmm. You can't do that when you're in the grave. Right. You can't do that when you're locked up. Read. That ye, that they may bear sons and daughters. Go ahead. That ye may be increased there. Read. And not diminished. Go ahead. And seek the peace of the city. We should do what? Seek the peace of the city. One thing a lot of y'all don't understand. Mm -hmm. That we should seek the peace of the city. We shouldn't be looking to have fights with the right. other nations. We right. shouldn't be looking to go to war with Esau. Mm -hmm. That's not our job right now. That's not what we're here to do. Right. Our job is here to keep the commandments of God and spread this gospel. Mm -hmm. That's our job. You know, this, this warfare is not physical. We Right now, we would not win a physical war. It's not happening. Right. We're not going to win a physical war. It's right. spiritual war. Mm -hmm. So guess what? You got to follow these laws, statutes, and commandments. Read it again. Seek what? Verse 7. Go ahead. And seek the peace of the city. Read. Where I have caused you to be carried away captives. And pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof ye shall have peace. So we're going to have peace if we practice peace. Right. In our peace we'll have peace. Okay. So look. Hey, Y'all understand that. When you're dealing with law enforcement. Let's deal with them according to the scriptures. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be it. Like I said before, I'm Captain Yudin, and to my left, Officer Ben and I. And it was 15 minutes with the captains dealing with law enforcement. Shalom, Most High in Christ Bliss. Most High in Christ Bliss. Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.